When the editor told me that this month's Sailing Today had a Caribbean theme, I naturally thought about the adventures I've had there over the years. What was I to write about? Might it be seeing Barbados rise out of the Atlantic at dawn, 42's eight out from Rio, in a boat with no engine and nothing much in the way of charts? Or perhaps I should choose a brutal thrash to windward I once made against the trades and current from Venezuela to the mouth of the dragon. Or roaring down the sound between Anguilla and St Martin at a giddy fifteen knots on the gaff schooner Eleonora, leaving everything afloat bobbing in our wake. You'll find plenty of inspiration in this sunshine issue, so I decided to take a look at the dark side of tropical cruising instead. Here's a typical scene. You have arrived in St Lucia at breakfast time after a long passage. Tucked up under the beach is a yacht owned by a chap you knew well in another life. Thirsty for local news, you hop into the dinghy. Close up, the other boat's obviously been baking in the sun for a year or two, but a friendly face answers your knock, and soon you're aboard. You settle into a bowl of health-promoting muesli at the saloon table while matey brews the coffee. And suddenly you realise you are not alone at the festive board. A pair of feelers are waving at you from behind the marmalade. When their owner trundles out to say good morning, he's a brown insect whose sheer tonnage shocks you as he toddles across to sample the crumbs, followed by several of his, sh- his six-legged shipmates. Not liking to offend, you hold your peace and observe with awful fascination how the little fellows seem to know no fear. Little, of course, is a relative term. A full-on supermarket cockroach from latitude 15 can be as long in the body as your thumb, with antennae doubling this up. The boat version rarely achieves such noble proportions, but even a modest specimen can run to well over an inch. You're discreetly flicking these unwanted borders onto the cabin cell with the butter knife when the skipper returns with the steaming mugs. Expecting him to wave some sort of wand that'll put an end to the horror, you're dumbfounded when he ignores the livestock and digs into his meal as though only you and he were present. By the time you're on your second slice of toast, the platoon has grown into a bustling battalion, but it's only when you select a lovely orange from the fruit bowl and two or three scuttle away behind the bananas that your revolted sensitivity cracks. Back aboard your plague-free vessel, you analyse the experience. I've personally found no hard evidence to suggest that cockroaches do us any harm. I may be wrong, but I've known plenty of individuals hailing from chronically infested yachts who are as healthy as the next person. Despite this, there's something primevally repugnant about the beast. The shameless liverboard cockroach benefits from everything a yacht owner has arranged for his own delight. He and his shipmates get it free of charge and with no attendant responsibilities. They eat just as well as we do, and if ever they fancy a change of diet, I've even seen them dining on one another. They relish the same views through the pilot house windows, yet they're never called on deck to reef on dark nights. Instead, they're carried around in the dry like first-class passengers. The entertainment's high class, too. They lurk on locker tops, watching the skipper taking his weekend pleasure in the bunk, then walk all over his sheet while he's getting his breath back. Judging from their population growth rate, they enjoy regular sex themselves, yet politically they're so far to the left that even Lenin would have praised their devotion to the cause. Setting the value of their own lives at nothing, they think only of the good of the state. Individually, Cockroach have an underdeveloped sense of survival, submitting meekly to the size 12 deck shoe in the certain knowledge that collectively they'll have the last laugh. Because many people living in infested yachts opt not to deploy the obvious solution of fumigation, the creatures are often so well tolerated that one wonders who the yacht is really being run for. The Cockroach Cruising Club has no joining fee. Its international affiliates may have widely varying motivations and yachts, but they all share a common problem. The answer to avoiding membership is simple. Zero tolerance. The pests board us by three main methods. Stealth, infiltration and direct assault. Each is a military tactic, and it's only by martial thinking that we can defeat their cohorts. No soldier goes into battle without assessing the available intelligence, so the first question to ask is, 
Where does the enemy hide out? Cockroaches can be found almost anywhere, but the boat bum variety love downtown supermarkets, homegrown vegetables and pre-packed foodstuffs. I once caught two lively examples coupling inside a sealed packet of cheese biscuits. They also like the spines of books swapped from infested yachts, but best of all, they love the underside of old wooden docks. Understanding this essential data helps us to think like a cockroach and keep a step ahead. All packaging material from shopping expeditions must be retained on deck and binned ashore immediately after transferring the produce to the ship's containers. All fruit and veg must be inspected and watched on deck in the sunshine, if appropriate. Strip one layer of dry skin off all onions, and so on. Books from any source at all should be treated as suspect by spraying insecticide inside their spines to neutralise eggs sown like tiny landmines. These methods will deal with most enemy infiltrators, but the stealth boarder specialises in snuggling into our clothes on pestilential yachts. After a jolly evening carousing with overrun neighbours, be sure to strip off on deck when you return to your boat. Shake out your gear, then slosh off the planking to make sure. You'll have swatted any big hitchhikers before you left the party, of course, but it's easy to miss a spirited youngster or two after in the dark. And remember, two is all it takes. The full frontal assault break brigade deploy their forces either by marching up the gangplank from their bridgehead under the woodwork, or by flying aboard, often from yachts where the barracks are getting too crowded. Never, therefore, anchor close to leeward of a yacht you know to carry a full complement, and never lie alongside overnight in the tropics, unless you're truly confident of your berth. The final advice in this briefing is that, like all combat troops, we must turn our backs on any civilised distaste for the taking of life. Killing a grade-A cockroach eye to eye is unpleasant because treading on them makes a noise like stepping on a matchbox. Bang him on with your fist demands a high level of moral fibre too, but you can console yourself with this thought. He doesn't mind dying. His race has remained unchanged since the time of the dinosaurs. They existed whatever it was that finished off T. rex Esquire, and they can survive nuclear fallout unharmed. Your victim knows his offspring will be ruling the roost long after we have either blown ourselves to glory or been traded in by evolution for a newer model. So don't feel bad. If, after all this, any skirmishers penetrate your defences, don't forget. Zero tolerance. Hunt every one to the death. Invest wisely and buy some really brutal insecticide spray. Rent-a-kill Insectrol kept my yachts clear in some far dodgier places than the Eastern Caribbean. It may not be ideal environmentally, but you won't go three heads after using it, and the results aren't nearly as depressing as sharing your dream voyage with a brigade of dirty, sex-mad communist cannibals from a hundred million years ago. Meanwhile, back in the sun... Beyond the palm-fringed spit guarding Marigo Bay, the trades are blowing, the salt spray's flying, and the finest sailing on planet Earth awaits. Sweep the bandits over the side, unfurl that asymmetric, and blast off for the ride of your life.